Now, the Chartered Institute of Taxation of Nigeria, CITN, since its establishment in February 1982, has played a critical role in regulating taxation profession in Nigeria through constant training, development, and certification of members of the profession to ensure our competence and professionalism. From that period to date, the Institute has grown in leaps and bounds, hence the reason for the celebration of its 40th anniversary by providing administrative and policy frameworks of tax, education, administration, practice in Nigeria. Well, I introduced them earlier, but to talk about all of the activities of CIT and at 40, I have the president and the chairman of council uh, here, Mr. Adishino, uh, Adidayo. And on my other side, I have the chairman of the anniversary planning committee, uh, Mr. Felicia Fasuto. He's also a past president of the institute. It's great to have you join us live in the studio. Thank you for having us. Let me start with you, uh, Mr. President. Uh, 40 years of regulating taxation. Uh, tell us, the institute must have gone through thick and thin. How has it been all the while? Let me put it this way. At the point of uh, uh, funding the institute, it started as two associations coming together and say, look, it's time for us to start doing something as it relates to administration and practice. And thereafter, they came up with the fact that, oh, let us have Nigerian self taxation about six months after. By the time the Nigerian self taxation came up, it started in 1987 as a full institute. By 1992, we got the shelter for the institute. Throughout this period, like everything that has started with a the foundation, there will be challenges. The challenges has to do with actually building relevance, talking about administrative challenges, mm -hmm. including governance. All these were the challenges we faced at the early stage. And talking about tasks in 1982, where some of us, somebody like me was a teenager, you have a challenge now talking about how do people start talking tasks. Tasks is not a product that you can say is palatable. But when you look at the way it has grown over the years, as of today, I doubt if there's any organization profit or non-profit, that will not discuss the issue of tax in the course of trying to address the challenges they are having. Because economic issues has to do with how do you make money? What portion of your money will be taken by the government? What portion of your money will not even be used by government itself for its development? So all these challenges have made tax an issue that is in the front burner of today's system. Indeed it is. And I'm going to ask uh, also, Mr. Fasheton, that... Um, a lot has been put on ground. It's everywhere on the social media, online, print media. But take us through some of uh, what we expect as we move on, uh, as we celebrate. Yeah. <laughs> this is the 48th year anniversary of the Institute that was fully established on the 4th of February, 1984. Really, uh, 1982. We really give glory to God Almighty because, as my president has just said, Everybody is now aware of taxation, more especially as responsibility. You know, time it was when you talk about tax, people believe that that is an abomination. But today, the situation has changed. You know, when you are setting up your business, you should know that government has a stake in that business by way of taxation. And, um, people are becoming more aware of their responsibilities. So the Institute has gone through thick and thin, as my president has said, during these past 40 years, and we are about consolidating those developments that uh, we have reached in uh, the uh, uh, nurturing taxation, as mm -hmm. well as regulating the profession. Hmm. Very, very interesting. Let, 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 me, let me follow up with that. Creating awareness and partnership with government issues and all of that, so talking about tax in the country, is one of the roles that CITN should play. How well have you been doing that? Yes. You know, we are having stakeholders. You have the taxpayers who are paying these taxes. You are having the government who are collecting the taxes and using it for the good governance of the populace. Then you have the advisors those people representing either the government or the taxpayers. And they are at different sides of the table. But, you know, as uh, my president said, two associations came together at the beginning because uh, those people paying tax, they want to pay as much as possible to be, you know, lower amount. Yeah. While government will want to rake in uh, as much yes. as possible. Yes. But, you know, as of now, 
we have created awareness that the taxpayers they know their obligations the tax administrators that is the government they know what how they should approach these taxpayers to in order to rake in the maximum amount of tax that is available and then you know the law is you know the law is being made to ensure that nobody is felt cheated hmm. let, let me go back to mr president now before we go into details of i know there's a lot of activities lined up uh, as we move on i uh, will talk about that but let's take it from where he he, he stopped Technology is key at this time, and all institutes across, I know everybody is trying to gain into technological advancement, take advantage of technology, and I think even for taxation, it will make it even simpler and easier. How are you tax administrators keen into that? Are you preaching that in CITN? Okay, let me put it this way. It is clear, it is apparently clear, if I have to put it that way, that with the use of technology, you can get more with less. And if you are talking about administrative impact, you can only make administrative impact when technology is deployed effectively. And that is one area the Institute has been focusing on. And it's also part of the area we have as our strategic agenda going forward. Because, you see, no matter how you do it, if you do not use technology, it's like you are trying to learn how to fish in the ocean using the type of equipment you can be using only at the pond. So it makes a challenge. So you have to now look at what are those things you need to deploy technology-wise. We are talking about a population that is growing by the day, every day. And we are having challenges of security. We are having challenges of borders on even COVID-19. We have so many challenges. It is, it is reducing the income capability of an average taxpayer. And you are not talking about those who are not even paying at all. So how will you get them if you do not deploy technology? So that is something we appreciate, even at the joint task board level. That is clear. Now, at the level of practice, for a business to make the level of desired income that is required, you are talking about a situation where there is no longer a, a, a block between you and the next country. It is now a bridge through the African continental free trade area. So with this at the back of our mind, technology has become very critical. Mm. It is not even negotiable. It mm. is something that has to do. And tax being the economic engine of every country, it is an area every tax administrator must get into. I don't know if you want to say something around the technology and taxation. Yeah. Uh, uh, as my president has said, uh, technology will surely play important role in maximizing the tax revenue uh, you know closely following the issue of technology is the utilization of the tax proceed uh, you know in the past people believe that uh, the tax that have paid what has government uh, done with it you know they believe that there are there are leakages in the revenue generation but the situation is changing because we are having professionals manning the tax collection. You can see the good job being carried out by the state's internal revenue services as well as federal inland revenue service, though we are, st we are yet to be there. But we are having our members who are professionals who are manning key sectors of these revenue authorities. And uh, the more we are putting technology into use, the more we'll be able to have reliable database once we have taxpayers enumeration, you'll be able to know those people so who should come into the tax net and those people should be able to pay. Then as a taxpayer, you should be able to know how much tax you are likely going to pay on a particular type of income. So technology will play an important role. Hmm. Let me let me come back to uh, Mr. President. Now let's talk about some activities lined up to 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 celebrate 40 SCITN at 40. Let's talk about some of the activities. Yeah, thank you very much. I will still defer some of those uh, uh, questions to, to the chairman, the chairman <laughs> who is my past president. <laughs> and let me put it this way: the conceptualization of the planning committee, if I have to even just give a leeway, is to make it clear hmm. that this is an institute that started without being clear as to how to grow and we've mm -hmm. grown we've survived we've seen a lot of challenges we've gone through a various administration and we have even strengthened our resilience in terms of governance we have improved our administrative aspect and we are making impact as far as both True. the country 
and outside of the country is concerned. We are signatories to the Global Tax Advisory Platform worldwide. So all these are things to celebrate at 40. And like we normally say, life begins at 40. But we leave the final details for the chairman. <laughs> so, so chairman, uh, committee, let, let, let's talk about some of the activities. Thank you very much. We actually start with God. Because uh, anything you place in the hand of God, yeah. you can be rest assured that everything will go on well. On uh, this coming Friday, all our members uh, throughout the country, and even some outside the country, will go to mosque and then g uh, carry out Thanksgiving. We are going to have uh, uh, um, uh, worship in various mosques as across the country. Then, on Sunday, Christians will go to ch various churches all over the country. We are going to give thanks to God for the past 40 years. He has kept us and the institute is growing in leaps and bounds. Mm -hmm. Then, on Monday, we are going to create awareness by tax work. Our members across the country, you are going to see us on the road, this t-shirt, uh, uh, cap, anything to create awareness about taxation. Mm -hmm. You will see our members across the country creating awareness, carrying out tax work uh, uh, around the various secretariat or the institute or around the tax, various tax offices. Then on Tuesday, that's on the 1st, there's going to be public lecture in Abuja. Uh, we are expecting the vice president of the country uh, to, uh, to, you know, to be a special guest of honor as well as uh, some invited governors, ministers, uh, government functionaries as well as private sector participate, uh, participants as well as international invitees we are going to talk about taxation because that is the in thing globally right now then the climax will come up on a Saturday uh, that will be in Lagos that will be gala, uh, there will be gala dinner uh, we are having invited guests you know all work no play Yes. Uh, make Jacks a, a dog boy. So, in the evening of uh, Saturday, that's the uh, fifth of February, members will converge uh, in Lagos, and then we are going to celebrate. That's just the summary of uh, what may likely uh, uh, come to bear concerning this uh, 40th year anniversary. In addition to that, we are going to pay visits to some uh, IDP camps. Uh, as well as uh, orphanage homes. Uh, we are having materials for them because we have to remember the less privileged. Uh, it's part, uh, they are part and parcel of the populace yes. and then any, anything taxation, they should be able to feel the largesse. Hmm. So let's, uh, let's take it up uh, from the president's uh, side now. Uh, awareness is, is very important and it's part of what you are doing now. How well do you intend to pass this message? And I also ask this way that Nigerians would always say that um, they want to also see what the proceeds of taxation are being used for. I cite example of a state like Lagos. I still see road constructions. I see a little bit of basic amenities being made available for me. So I'm encouraged to pay tax. How well can we do all of this to encourage people to voluntarily pay tax? Okay, let me put it this way. As of today, the Institute has over 44 district societies wow. in about 32 states, plus Abuja. Now, when you look at that level of impact, where we are even there at the grassroots level, this is something that we have technically made clear that at every state and district level, we want to be talking about technical intervention. We want to be talking about education awareness. And we also want to be able to talk about accountability as to what we know about each of those states. So you will see the impact is now so much that even the recent visit we had to MENA was part of the thing that led to us engaging even the governor and the state commissioner of finance on it. Now, if you are now looking at what is the tax revenue doing in terms of usage, let's start with something. Is a chicken and the egg approach. Yes. Have you made your own part relating to carrying out your own civic responsibility? If the answer is a no-no, then where do you have the moral authority to ask how it has been done? So we are making it clear. Let us, from even the citizen perspective, ensure that we play our part. Now, at the government level, which is the advocacy aspect we play as an institute, we engage 
on a regular basis. And we do this at various fora. We talk about our JTB level. We also visit state at the various district level. And even with state internal revenues service chairman. These are all regular engagement. We do not stop at that. At level of education, we do free seminars, free workshops. We also talk about issues where at the level of talking about publications, we are equally there. The, we do not stop at this. It is a continuous thing. Because in the real contest, what we are battling with 99% of the time as a country has to do with poverty and ignorance. Mm. So as we are trying to address the aspect of ignorance in relating to tax, the aspect of poverty too, we should believe that the government is involved in, we are also making it clear, accountability is critical to tax proceed. Hmm. And that is what we preach every time. Just like my immediate past, uh, my, my past president mentioned, hmm. it is very critical. Very critical. Uh, Mr. Pastor, I, 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 I'm looking at uh, engaging tax practitioners like what uh, I was asking the, the, the president, particularly bringing them up to speed with developments in the tax environment and um, emerging policies and all of that. Like at the moment, finance acts, tax practitioners are so busy uh, how has it been? What advice are you, are you giving to them? Yeah, you know, the first advice we give to our members is that they must be up to date. Uh, without law, there is no taxation. It must be, there must be law backing up any type of tax that you want to set up. And, um, you know, we are grateful to government that um, they have now activated, you know, the what taxation should be in Nigeria, just like in developed world. You know, People need to remove the archaic aspect of the tax law so that citizens will be able to be sure, they will be able to be clear as to what is expected of them when it comes to their tax responsibilities. We've been talking about 6% uh, percent, uh, uh, tax uh, revenue to GDP. Is a, is a thing that you want to change. And by God's grace, we are getting there. You know, Nigeria, they don't believe that they are not paying taxes. Even if they are not paying anything to government, they believe that they are spending money, you know, developing their roads, uh, getting their waters, uh, electricity, and so on and so forth. But we want to, you know, we want to reverse that uh, situation. Let the right taxes be paid at the right time to government. And then let the government be responsible to be able to give the citizens what is expected of them. That is the objective of our institute. Uh, almost, almost wrapping up now, uh, President, very important point raised by Mr. Fasoto, and I'm um, talking about tax to GDP ratio. We've talked about the 6% for a while. Uh, these have been in this, covering this sector too for some time, and that 6% has been like what I've always heard. Now, uh, many say that we could bring together informal and formal sector, we could get better. You are the professional here. How can we get better with regard to this you know we started this discussion by talking about the impact of technology mm -hmm. let's move a little bit further in terms of that conversation do we have a specific idea about the population of nigeria do we have an idea about those who are dependent because you see at the beginning of a life you are dependent up to maybe when you talk about finishing a uh, school or secondary school level but with the use of technology, even some younger ones are even making money. Yes. That's very young. Yes. Good. True. And then when you get to a certain age, even as somebody who has been working in employment, 60, 65, and thank God for even technology, medical technology, people can live to be 80. And then you are talking about maybe 60, is you are retired, and then that means that there are still other life after retirement. Mm -hmm. These are all people that you, by the time you get this idea of this population, and we have a database, we can see what are our vibrant economy. Then you are having a situation where you are having uh, a gap in terms of who are those people really paying taxes outside of those in employment. These are all areas we need to have an idea about. Now, the informal sector, which is, a, is meant to be informal, that means over time, if they grow, they will end up becoming part of the seed fund or for the former sector. How are we nurturing them? Yeah. From the perspective of lending, from the perspective of knowledge, mm -hmm. how are they moving from that ignorance level where they think it's about me and a small shop, and then gradually they are able to see government support, intervention. These are the people that are, feed, that are meant to feed our future economy. 
Because for as long as we keep talking about you see, the movement from one place to another is supposed to be a free thing. I can set up a shop in Lagos, and tomorrow I decide to relocate to Abeokuta. Now, the, when I'm in Lagos, I'm under Lagos State Internal Revenue. The day I say I'm tired of Lagos and I want to go back closer to a remote place, maybe in Abeokuta, how will the Internal Revenue Service in Ogun State know that I've relocated from Lagos to Abeokuta? Hmm. How will Lagos be able to even track me to say, where is my next move? We need to actually deploy technology. And that is very critical in order for us to bring these people in the informal sector into the tax net. Mm. And from bringing them into the tax net, we can now craft policy. And you mentioned one question. We have legislative impact as an institute, which we have made in terms of influencing some laws or even trying to get the executive to say okay. these ones will not distinct. We have administrative impact. And naturally, our institute, beyond even institutional intervention, we have members of our institute, individuals, who have been very critical mm -hmm. to ensuring that administrative improvement has come to play. Then you have the policy aspect, which is a third leg. We have been influential in talking about policy drive that has made tax to become the center stage. Mm -hmm. All these are the things we bring in as released to how to help in bringing our tax to GDP ratio up. Well, Mr. Pajoso, you, you want to add something and your message to yeah, members as yes, we prepare for yeah, the big Yes, yes. I will be inviting TVC to join us in, <laughs> you know, in this celebration. <laughs> we are inviting dignitaries, and then we want to make taxation to be, you know, much more inviting to taxpayers rather than seeing taxation as a body. I, I want to promise Nigerians that once you pay your tax at the right time, the right tax at the right time, government will be compelled to do it right at the right time and if they fail to do so then you have the moral obligation to be able to push the government to do what is uh, expected to be done so we invite you to our 40th anniversary celebration we will we, we, we'll be there what, what parting shot for me parting shot is the fact that uh, if all of us are so much in love with soccer it is time for us to fall in love with tax. <laughs> Nigerians should start talking tax. Mm -hmm. We are having that as part of our objective. <laughs> All right, brilliant submission. Then you've heard from uh, the horses about, yes, <laughs> about what we should expect uh, CITN at 40. Very interesting conversation around taxation. Very lately, too, I've been getting to understand so many things about taxation well, because of the job I do. But I must thank the president of the institute, uh, CITN, and the chairman of council is Mr. Adishina Adishina. Detail live in the studio and on the other side, the chairman of the anniversary planning committee, who's also a past president, very interesting, uh, of the institute, uh, Mr. Felicia Fashoto. Thank you so much, uh, for joining us on Business Nigeria. We appreciate this, and we'll continue to see how we can partner and strengthen relationship with institutes like yours. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. All Thank right, you